My name is Brandy. I'm the owner and artisan behind Brush by Brandy. And this week we're going to be working on this super cute um, mahogany vanity that I picked up off my local Facebook marketplace. I want to say I paid in the $40 to $50 range for it. It also has a mirror that matches and it came with a glass top too, which was a bonus. I'm going to start out by using my surf prep stander and stripping this top down. My customer wants a bare wood top. This one was pretty damaged, so it needs to go all the way back to raw wood. When I'm stripping a top down using my sander, I do a test spot first to make sure it's going to sand okay. Um, that will tell me if I need to use a chemical stripper or not first. And then I use an 80 and then 120 and 220 grit sandpaper and that's what got me to here. Then I went ahead and cleaned my piece really well with Dixie Belle White Lightning, removed my hardware and gave it a coat of Dixie Belle Boss and Clear and that's going to help this mahogany not bleed through and discolor my paint colors. With my coats of boss all on and nice and dry, I'm ready to start laying my paint on. Um, I'm going to do a blended finish on this. My customer requested pinks that fade into a light gray and then going all the way to black. And so my four colors that I'm using here are Dixie Belle Fluff, Tea Rose, Manatee Gray, and Midnight Sky. I chose Midnight Sky, which is a soft black that almost can lean to a navy blue sometimes. Um, I chose that over Caviar, which is a pure black, because of its blendability. I think the soft black is much easier to blend than the harsh black of Caviar would be, especially going into the gray color. Um, Midnight Sky can also tend to pick up gray tones if you put it next to a gray color. I use Midnight Sky quite a bit. It's one of my favorite colors for shading. In this case, what my plan is to get to the pure black on the bottom is I'm gonna use my Midnight Sky, and then where I want it to turn into a pure black, I'm just gonna add some black wax over it, and that's gonna darken the paint even more, and then I'll get the benefit of the softness of the blend, and then I can use that black wax to turn it into my pure rich black that I want to. My first coat of blending is where I just conceptualize my finish. I put my colors together, see how I want them to lay out, and that tells me where I wanna go on my second coat. My second coat is what I use to really finalize and perfect the blend on the finish. So my first coat that I just did is really just my rough draft coat. All right, my first coat is all done. I'm ready to come back and lay my second coat. I did let 24 hours elapse. Um, in between my second coat. This makes sure that my first coat is plenty dry. So when I'm working this second coat, I'm not gonna start pulling my paint. You wanna make sure that your first coat is nice and dry. Otherwise, all this working of your paint and adding the water, and you're gonna start pulling back that first coat. I start off by laying my paint colors on. You'll notice on this second coat that I'm reversing the order from my first coat. So the first time I started with my darker color down at the bottom, now I'm gonna start with my lighter color up at the top. And I do this because I find that I can get heavy handed one way or another, and this helps me kind of even myself out by the end. I start out by first laying all of my paint colors onto the body of my piece. I do this because I need paint that I can work together. So I need to get it up on my surface first. There is no right or wrong way to do this. I use my Dixie Belle mini brush, which is my favorite brush for laying paint on. I do make sure I use some water. This helps my brush glide a little bit easier over that first coat. And I actually use very little paint on this coat because my first coat has my coverage that I need. I just need a little bit of paint on this coat that I can start working together. Once I have my colors up on my body, I can start working them together. In this case, I used my Dixie Belle Besting brush. I just kept misting my paint with water, not enough to make it drip, but just enough to keep it moist, to keep it from drying. And then I came back with my Besting brush and used a swirling motion to swirl my paint colors together. And then I can use my oval medium brush to soften out anywhere I've got brush strokes. Let's repeat the same process onto the side of this piece. Same process, I'm gonna start out by laying my four colors onto the side of my piece. I am using one brush for each color, and then I've got out my um, besting brush and then a neutral brush, which is my oval medium. So once they're all laid onto the side of my piece, I'm gonna come back with my besting brush and start working them together. When you're blending, you don't need to keep lines of where each color delineates. I actually wanna get rid of those. I don't wanna be able to see where one color starts and the next color stops. Um, and that is because I'm trying to create an even blend where they fade into each other. So I brush them into each other to get rid of those lines. Blending can be a series of back and forth. If you find that one color gets a little too muddy, then you may need to add back a little bit of that color to true it back up to its original. Um, and that's okay. It's this back and forth until you get the look that you like. 
I do like the besting brush because it works the colors together really quickly, but then I find that you almost need to smooth it out with the um, oval medium, and that's because the besting brush leaves a lot of swirls, a lot of texture in your brush strokes, so it gets your colors to where you want them, and then you just smooth it out with that oval medium a little bit. It really gives you that soft, faded look that I'm after. The front of this piece was fairly simple. Aside from the Hebel white poles, it didn't really have a lot of interest. So I chose to add some Would You Bend moldings to the bottom of the drawer sections on the front of this vanity. So my um, moldings that I wanted to use were a little bit too large. So I just came back with a razor knife and I'm cutting them so they'll fit the space that I have on my vanity. The cool thing about this is the little pieces that I'm cutting off, I actually can use in another part of this vanity as well. I had already painted this piece and so I chose to pre-paint my moldings before I put them on um, and that way it matches the body color of my piece and it just catches it up to the paint that I already have on. I find that you can do would you bend moldings either way. You can either paint them before you put them on or you can come back and paint them after you, they're already on your piece. Either way works great. These are going on to the bottom of my vanity where they're a solid color of midnight sky so I just need to paint them in the one color which is midnight sky. Now that they're all painted, I'm going to cover the backs of my moldings in a thin coat of Tight Bond Quick and Thick Adhesive. This is my favorite go-to adhesive. I use it for just about everything. It sticks to anything, wood, glass, PVC, you name it. Um, and it really holds on these moldings pretty well. And it dries quickly and doesn't drip down the front of your piece while it's drying. These drawer faces have the slightest curvature to them. So once I've got my Would You Bend on there, I come back with my heat gun. And I'm just going to perfectly meld this to the slight curvature of the front of my drawers. A little bit of my glue came out around the sides. That's okay. This is a water-based glue. I came back with my brush with my Midnight Sky and I just brushed in a little bit so it looks seamless to my piece now. Small details like these Would You Bend moldings add a ton of interest. Now that my body is all done, let's come back and pay attention to my top. I usually like to do this in the reverse order, but because I painted a little bit of this piece live on camera, I didn't have time to get this all done before I started painting the body. So we're going to do this in reverse order and do my top um, as the second part. Usually I do the top first so that I don't take a chance of getting any stain onto my painted body. Because I'm doing them reverse, I'm just going to have to be really careful I don't get anything onto my paint. I'm starting out with an oil-based pre-stain conditioner from Minwax. I'm using oil-based because my stain is also oil-based. If you're going to use a water-based stain, make sure you're using a water-based conditioner. Here's where this vanity really starts coming to life. I'm going to add the Magnolia Garden Transfer from Dixie Belle. This transfer is gorgeous white flowers. They're really classy, and I also have found that they look great on any background. You could put these up against white and they'd be a really subtle, classy difference. You could put them up against darker colors and they give you a lot of contrast. Um, here, I love them up against the soft colors of the pink and the gray. When I'm applying a transfer, I usually start with my larger pieces first. I'm going to layer this transfer and create my own design. I really love the buildable design of this transfer because it lets a whole bunch of different designs come out of one single transfer. You'll never see any two pieces done exactly the same way. I think that laying transfers is an art. I think there's an art to how you lay it out and creating a design that's unique to your piece. Um, I also think it's an art to be able to get them to wrap curves and bends and all different shapes and get them to lay on smoothly. I want you guys to notice as I'm working on this how well this transfer takes to fluted moldings. Fluted moldings are incredibly hard to lay transfers onto because it's a series of highs and lows that you have to get the transfer to conform to. The Dixie Belle transfers take to curves remarkably well. When I'm laying a transfer, I start out by focusing on my larger pieces first, and then I will come back and fill in with smaller pieces of the transfer. So I chose my larger flowers to start my design with. I had a rough idea of my layout at this point that I want it to vine on the left hand side coming down from the top and then on the right hand side it's going to come up from the bottom and then maybe a little bit of detail in the center. So that was all I started with is just a rough idea. I also knew that I wanted to focus my design around the flowers. I wanted the blooms to be the real focus more than the wooded sticks and the green of the leaves that also appear in this transfer. So I start by laying my flattest portion, largest flattest portion first. So I'm laying the drawer portion on, and then I'm gonna take a razor knife, I'm gonna cut it around the edges of the drawers. This makes them so they're not all attached to each other, so I can just work one small piece at a time. So now that I've got my main piece cut apart and that separated my drawer faces done, I'm gonna start focusing on the fluted molding itself. 
Um, I can start by, I wrap it on with my fingers, pressing it down into the crevice and I do just one ridge at a time. Rub that one ridge on and then press it down with my fingers on the next one, rub that one on. So I'm just doing one at a time. If you rub it over the top all together and then try to force it into those crevices, you're gonna cause your transfer to tear. I use my razor knife to control the cuts so that I'm not forcing the transfer to stretch where it might tear. This way I can control where I want the tears by just making cuts there myself. Um, I did cut it into the seams of my um, fluted molding and that way it didn't tear in those low points. I got a nice clean um, razor cut in those low points. On any places that I can't reach with my fingers to press the transfer into, I just come back with a firm brush and I press it into there and almost burnish the transfer using the firm brush. Of course, flat areas are much easier to do with transfers, but don't be scared that you can't put these into molded areas too. As long as you take it slow, don't be afraid to cut your transfer. Just do one ridge at a time. You can absolutely get these transfers to take to curved surfaces as well. Once I've got my main body area done, I can start laying in some of my smaller pieces. So I'm just gonna cut out some of my smaller pieces. I ended up cutting this transfer into literally 50 pieces. I think almost every leaf and stick and bloom was isolated into its own little cut piece so that I could build it any way I wanted to. This piece here, I'm gonna slow down into real, real time so you can really see how one of these transfer pieces goes on. Once I've chosen my design, I kind of dry fit it to figure out my placement, which way I want it to point. Um, here I'm paying attention to where my hardware is gonna sit because I don't wanna cover my transfer with my hardware. Once I've got my placement figured out, I just rub my transfer on with my fingers and this just gives me a light placement. And then I'm gonna come back and rub it on with the transfer tool that comes with the transfer itself. The transfer tool is a wooden stick that comes in the package and it really wraps around any surface. You just wanna make um, sure that you don't directly rub the wood onto your painted finish because you can leave light little scuff marks on your painted surface. I do the flat piece of the drawer face first and then I came back and I just sliced with my razor knife. Um, and now I'm going to rub it onto the um, curved moldings that are on the top and the bottom of this drawer. I just opened the drawer so that I can lightly wrap the transfer over the top section so that you don't see a cut on the front of the drawer piece. It, it actually puts the cut inside the drawer itself. And this hides that seam perfectly. I pick up the clear backing and I'm going to rub the front of my transfer as I pull it back. I'm doing this slowly and I'm watching the clear backing as I go to make sure that I'm not pulling any pieces of my transfer up with it. This helps the transfer to break away from the clear backing and want to set to my piece. You don't wanna pull that clear backing away too quickly or you can tear your transfer or pull pieces of it up with the clear. Um, so as I go, I'm just watching any places that I see are pulling. I go back with my transfer tool and I'm just gonna make sure I rub those down. Those are just areas that need a little more attention. Transfers that have a lot of small details on them can take a lot more rubbing. You have to pay attention to every little cut detail. So just be aware that some of those really detailed transfers can need a lot more attention and time. All right, I'm just about ready to pull this clear backing off and show my transfer fully attached to this drawer. Um, I think that went on really easily for the amount of detail that, that these add. It's really a pretty simple process. Let's go ahead and stain the top. I did let my pre-stain conditioner soak in for just a little bit. Now it's ready to accept some stain. The pre-stain conditioner just helps my stain take to my wood more evenly. If you've got any stains or existing damage in your top, um, this can be a really important step that you don't wanna skip. For this top, I'm actually using a combination of Dixie Belle No Paint Gel Stain in the colors Espresso and Colonial Black. I'm gonna kind of apply them and streak them in a little bit together so they mix together. I didn't want a full mix, but I did want a little bit of spots that are slightly darker with the Colonial Black. All right, here we are with the face all done. I've got my top all nice and stained. Um, let's go ahead and start working on the insides of this drawer. We're gonna pay attention to the drawer boxes themselves. All right, here's a word of advice. Nobody has ever refinished a vintage piece of furniture and said, wow, I'm super glad that they put contact paper in this piece 50 years ago. Skip the contact paper, you guys. It doesn't age very well and it actually does damage to the drawers. I love a good wooden drawer boxes. Drawers are made of wood because that's the best material they can be made of. Um, I don't paint them unless there's any damage or anything that I need to cover up inside that drawer. I try to leave them in their original wood condition. 
So on this one, that meant that I needed to remove the existing contact paper. I just used a heat gun anywhere that it was stubborn and they did pull back and then I came back and cleaned them with a goof off um, uh, adhesive remover. All right, you guys, I have new designs of silkscreen stencils from Dixie Belle that I want to use. And the one that I love the most is this lace design. It's beautiful. Um, it's incredibly intricate, and I think it will be really pretty just peeking out the sides of this vanity. Silkscreen stencils are actually really easy to use for the incredibly intricate design that they give. Um, you, they're lightly adhesive, so you can just lay them onto your surface, press them in place, uh, and then you can just scrape over it a thin coat of your Dixie Belle paint. These also work with the Moonshine Metallics. They work with the Gemstone Mousse. I'm just using a little bit of my Midnight Sky paint color here. You're going to scrape a thin even coat over the top and then when you pull back your lightly adhesive stencil it's going to reveal the design. These have a really fine mesh um, screen embedded in the stencil itself and that screens your paint to give these really fine details and make them possible. You can't get this look with any other type of stencil. Let's talk about silkscreen care. These are washable and reusable. So as long as you take care of them, you can keep washing and reusable, reusing them. I just did a piece that I used the same silkscreen, same piece of silkscreen 14 times just by washing it out in between each use. The key to taking care of them is you want to make sure that your paint never dries in your silkscreen mesh. Once that paint is dried in there, it's really hard to remove. I recommend not using your silk screen more than, I don't know, one to three times tops before you wash it out. I actually find I get best results if I wash it out in between each use. Take it right over to the sink. If you can't get to a sink, get it into a dish of water if you need to wait before you can wash it, just so that paint doesn't set up in those screens. Once you've got it into the sink, um, you can use the scrubby soap from Dixie Belle. Um, has a light abrasive in it, and that soap removes the paint really easily. And then um, I just use a hair dryer if I want to re reuse the same stencil right away. I just dry it really quickly with my hair dryer. It rejuvenates the sticky from the back. It's nice and clean and dry, and I can reuse it right away. With all of my silk screens done and my drawers are nice and clean, I'm gonna come back and just freshen up these drawer boxes with a little bit of Big Mama's Butter. It just adds a light sheen to the wood. It's also going to help seal my silk screens on the sides of these drawers. I also add it to my drawer glides as well. Okay, I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about wiping clear coat onto this piece. So I'm actually gonna put a coat of clear on it without spraying this, um, just for the sake of showing you. So. I'm going to use the Dixie Belle Blue Applicator Sponge, and when I use this blue sponge, I do take water and I dampen my sponge, and then I will bring it out over a sink until I've wrung out any moisture in it whatsoever. So I like this when I'm wiping on a clear coat. Now I'm going to go ahead and wipe across this top to show you guys how I would wipe a clear coat on. So I like to start in the middle, and then I'm going to wipe one direction and come back and even that out. Now starting in the middle allows me to have enough to go all the way across my piece without it being heavy on one side versus the other. This is Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat and I'm wiping it over no pain gel stain in espresso. Okay, you'll notice that I can go over this a couple of times and it's got a nice long open life. I try to wipe it nice and even. Let me show you something. If I'm wiping on a clear coat, and I have streaks in my clear coat, heavy spots like this right here. If I leave that, it's going to dry streaky. If it looks streaky going on, it's going to dry streaky as well. So I'm going to come back and even that out. I go over where they overlap and I even that out. And I'll use a lighter hand to make sure that I'm getting even coverage all the way across. Another thing that can help when you're wiping on a clear coat is if you wipe in the same direction. So I find this is particularly helpful with gator hide. So once I get my clear coat all on and I've got nice even coverage, I can come back from one side and wipe all the way across. Start at the same side, wipe all the way across. If you keep your clear coat directional, that helps with streakiness. Clear coat has a gloss in it. It's going to pick up the reflection from light and keeping it directional helps keep you streak free too. Okay, let's go ahead and do this last one right here. I wipe it on and then I can come back and get my direction going the same way and that's going to help. These are just a few tips. I usually like to spray my clear coat. That is an absolute foolproof way to getting it nice and smooth. But those are a few tips that can help. Now let's come to the front and I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about um, putting on clear coat over 
um, wax accents. So on this piece here, I've used a little bit of Dixie Belle Best Stain Wax in black, and I've just kind of accentuated some of my corners. So I've got a little bit of wax accents. So Dixie Belle Wax is, or the Best Stain Wax is a water-based wax. And what that means is when I wipe on a clear coat that's water-based, I'm gonna reactivate that wax that I just put on. I just put this on yesterday. So what I do when I'm going to go over wax accents, which means it's not full body coverage, I just did little accents of the wax, is I make sure that my first coat that goes on, I put it on very gently. So I'm gonna use a brush. I don't use the sponge because the sponge actually creates more friction on my surface and it's gonna to wanna to pull those waxes that I just put on. So I'm gonna switch over to a brush now and I'm gonna make sure my brush is nice and damp. So I just dampen my bristles a little bit with a little bit of water, work that in. And then I'm gonna pull my drawer out a little bit. Grab a screwdriver. Okay, I'm gonna pull my drawer out a little bit and I'm gonna dip into my satin clear coat. Got my brush nice and full and I'm gonna brush my coat on. Now this is my first coat right over those waxes. I'm not going to over brush. I'm using a very soft hand. I'm not overworking it. I'm just going to get my coverage. Okay, that's it. Those couple brush strokes. And then I'm going to let this coat dry. Once this coat is dry, I've got a barrier on my waxes that's going to protect them. And I can come back and I can use my blue sponge if I want. I can over brush if I want because I've created that barrier. Let's go ahead and do another drawer. So same thing on this top drawer. I've got very, some very light black accents just on the corners. I'm gonna dip my damp brush and I'm gonna very gently brush across them, but I'm not overworking. If I overwork those spots with the wax on them, I'm gonna pull those waxes. Okay, so I just do one coat, not overworking them. Let that dry. And then I can come back and I can give my additional coverage using my sponge if I want, but that first coat I make sure goes on very gently so that I'm not pulling those waxes. They're very deliberately placed. I wanna leave them exactly where they are. Go ahead and do this drawer. Okay, and I use a brush because I can control how heavy my hand is. I can put it on with a very light hand, less friction on my surface, just using the tips of my bristles brushing right across those waxes. A little bit of removal is still normal, but it's not enough that I'm gonna pull those waxes. Okay, let that dry, that's gonna create my barrier. Come in here and get this. And I will pull all these drawers out and get inside the body, but right now I just wanna create that barrier over the top of my waxes. Not overworking just enough to protect them so that I can come back and wipe on a heavier clear coat or multiple clear coats, whichever I prefer. Um, I think the satin clear is very user friendly. This is what I always recommend for beginners. And then a good quality synthetic brush to brush it on with or the um, sponge if I'm just gonna sponge it on. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry. I've got my entire surface covered. My waxes are still intact, very deliberate where I place them. Now I can let this dry and I can come back and either brush another coat with my brush or I can come back and do it with my sponge from here. But my waxes will be nice and protected. All right, this piece is all complete and I'm thrilled with how it turned out. It's beautiful. It's very soft and romantic feeling. It's got all the details paid attention to. Those drawer sides are super wow. Um, I did end up spray painting my hardware and then I just used a little bit of silver gilding wax on the high points and that finished that up. A little bit of silver gilding wax on my Would You Bend as well. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, I hope you'll click the subscribe button. As always, you can find anything I use in this video in the description of the post. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, um, and YouTube and my website at brushbybrandy.com.